Thank you so much for the introduction, uh, Conchita. Um, as Conchita says, my name is Jessica. I'm a third year PhD student at the University of Aberdeen in Scotland. Um, and today I'm going to speak to you about part of my project, which was the process behind developing a biofilm growth inhibition assay to aid the discovery of natural product anti-fouling compounds. So to give a bit of background context into why I'm interested in this, um, in the oil and gas and the maritime industries, there is a big problem with something known as biofouling. Biofouling can be described in two halves, let's say. So the first part is microfouling, which is typically a slimy green biofilm layer that you would see growing on rocks or perhaps on um, the, uh, on docks, the legs of docks, and biofilms are comprised of an aggregation of algal, fungal and bacterial cells. So this slimy biofilm layer is then the perfect substrate for attracting larval settlement from macrofoulers. So these are typically larger, harder organisms like mussels and barnacles and also hard corals which then attach on top of the biofilm, on top of the subsea surfaces, to form a thick encrustment like this, which is incredibly diverse, full of lots of different organisms, which is, which is great uh, ecologically wise, but in terms of finances um, and challenges with the maritime industries and the oil and gas industry, this thick biofouling is really difficult to remove and very costly to remove also. From an ecological standpoint, in terms of the shipping industry, this biofilling can actually be um, hazardous in the sense that it can be a, a method of transporting invasive species from one area to an area where we don't want those species. So in general, we want to try and prevent biofouling in the marine environment. There are currently solutions out there to help prevent biofouling. Um, these are typically in the form of copper-based paints, including these booster biocides. Um, a classic example of a anti-fouling agent would be tributyl tin, which is not used now. Um, as in 2008, it was actually banned by the International Maritime Organization due to its very toxic effects against non-target organisms. So relating that back to the present day and these compounds which are currently being used for anti-fouling, some of these compounds are now showing uh, toxic effects also against non-target species and recent studies are showing that they're beginning to accumulate in the marine environment. So we need to start looking for new ways of preventing biofouling. Marine natural products could be a good solution to this problem as in the past we have mimicked um, the compounds produced by nature so why can't we do it for anti-fouling in the marine environment also? Marine invertebrates in particular are very prolific producers of chemical defence compounds. So this could be to deter predators from eating them or to prevent uh, organisms from settling on their own surfaces. So in this case, we want to look at these chemical defence compounds and see if we can use them in this purpose of present preventing marine fouling. So they could be a suitable alternative, more environmentally friendly and non-toxic since they are coming from nature, so they're already in the marine environment. So the main aim of my project, as you might have gathered, is to try and find new anti-fouling active compounds from marine invertebrates. And in order to do that, there is a series of steps that I need to follow. The first step in the process was developing a suitable bioassay so that I can use in-house instead of having to send my samples away, waiting long times to get results. And this is what I'm going to speak about to begin with. So the assay that I'm using in the lab is a biofilm growth inhibition assay. And this is an assay that you might have heard of more for a medicinal context, so testing and screening compounds to prevent medicinal biofilms and infections. But in the case of marine biofilms, um, there's not so many groups which are working with this type of assay. So this is not an assay which is typically carried out in my lab. I'm the first one to try and introduce it. Um, so using the methods in previous papers, I tried to, to produce it in the lab. So this type of anti-biofilm assay follows a general procedure. It typically includes growing your bacterial cultures in liquid form and then transferring these liquid cultures to a 96 well plate alongside your samples, whether that's extracts or whether it's fractions or pure compounds. You then incubate the samples with your cultures in this plate 
uh, for an allocated amount of time in order to allow these biofilms to grow along the bottom of the wells. And after this time period, you remove the excess liquid and this should leave the biofilm at the bottom of the well, which you can then stain using a crystal violet solution and then quantify the amount of biofilm growth in the presence of the samples when compared to a control. And you can see what effect the samples have had on the biofilm growth. So I am a chemist and not a microbiologist, so I was trying to develop this assay during the current circumstances. So I couldn't go to a lab and try and learn this technique from, from another group. I had to kind of try and figure it all, out all my, by myself, which was rather challenging. Um, I had to consider many different factors for this bioassay. I had to consider what medium was best for growing the cultures. How long do I grow them for? What temperature do I grow them at? How long do I need to incubate the plates in order to form biofilms? So after a few months of trial and error and optimising the method, I managed to find the optimal conditions. So we found that using a filtered seawater medium enriched with 0.5% peptone gave the best, most uniform biofilms across the bottom of the wells. I grew my cultures overnight for a quick and efficient uh, running of the assay and then diluted them before adding to the wells. I grew the cultures at 28 degrees and also incubated the 96 well plates at 28 degrees and the plates were incubated for 48 hours to allow for the maximum amount of biofilm growth. So I've managed to develop the assay. The next step in this project was to test my marine invertebrate extracts for their bioactivity. As you can see here, I have 17 different samples. My funders at this stage don't want me to mention what the actual invertebrate extracts are, so that's why I'm being very secretive with the, the numbering system here. But I can say that these marine invertebrate extracts were um, a mixture of methanol extracts and DCM extracts from all different types of marine invertebrate organisms. And these organisms were collected by divers off of the west coast of Scotland. And I think the, the lowest depth was 20 metres for collecting these organisms. And my invertebrate extracts have been tested against five different uh, marine bacterial strains. So these bacterial strains are key organisms in the biofilm formation process in both the marine and estuarine environments. So they are key species and a good representation of what species are forming these biofilms. The samples were prepared and uh, tested at a concentration of 50 micrograms per ml and we have found some quite promising results for a few of the different extracts here. So the ones that I've highlighted with stars are showing quite nice activity across uh, a few of the different strains in each of the circumstances here. So it is quite promising results moving forward to try and find the individual compounds responsible for the anti-fouling activity. However, you may have noticed in the previous slide, I actually only mentioned four of the bacterial uh, species that I'm using for the assay. Here are the results for Halomonas aquamarina, which are confusing to say the least. Um, along the axis here, we have biofilm growth inhibition percentage. And as you may notice across the majority of the samples, we have negative growth, which means that in the presence of the samples, the biofilms are actually growing more. At this stage, we don't really understand why this is. Upon first kind of thinking about it, we we put this down to maybe the sugars and the fatty acids in the crude extracts are perhaps promoting the growth of biofilms for Halomonas aquamarina. But like I say, at this stage, it's something that we do need to investigate further to try and get a bit more clarity as to why we have witnessed this effect for one species, whereas in the previous species, we see nice growth inhibition, biofilm growth inhibition. So I have now, I'm at the stage where I've tested my marine invertebrate extracts. I now have an idea of which extracts are good to move forward with. And the next stage in my project is to continue to use my assay that I've managed to develop to guide me to pure anti-fouling active compounds from the marine invertebrate extracts that I have. I have actually tested a few of my fractions and a few of my uh, compounds that I've isolated previously. I've not mentioned them today as they're very new results and we still need to kind of go over them. Um, 
But hopefully with the, the use of my assay, I can find new anti-fouling active compounds, which could hopefully provide new environmentally friendly and non-toxic uh, solution to prevent anti-fouling, uh, to prevent marine fouling in the future. Thank you very much. I'd just like to thank my supervisors, Professor Marcel Jaspers and Professor Frithjof Kweper for all of their help and support. My funders, the National Decommissioning Centre, Net Zero Technology Centre and the University of Aberdeen. My lovely colleagues at the Marine Biodiscovery Centre where we do our, our lab work at the University of Aberdeen and also the fantastic divers that go and collect samples for me whenever I need them, Martin, Kat and Andy from Tritonia Scientific Limited. Thank you so much for listening to me. <laughs>